In this video, we're going to look at a feature where a respondent can go ahead and actually have the survey progress that they've made, so the questions that they have been filling out, have it actually be saved if they close out of the browser. So if somebody doesn't actually have that much time, they start it, they see that maybe a survey is a little bit longer and they need to come back to it, they can go ahead and the responses that they've already provided will be saved when they go back to it. So let's have a look at how we do that because there is a setting that we would need to go ahead and turn on to be able to do that. So first thing we're gonna do is on the survey itself, we're gonna click on the send tab and then we're going to go into the um, customization and we're going to go into the distribution section. And then from there, we're going to click on participants. Now, what we're going to be looking for is this section here where it says save survey progress. Now, we can see if we hover our mouse over this little information icon, then it's showing the progress is only saved if surveys are sent through personalized invitations. So in other words, if I create a survey and I have the direct link for it and I share that maybe somewhere on social media, um, then if somebody's clicking on that and going to fill it out, it's not going to save the progress for that. It's only going to be if I'm generating an invitation and sending it out to somebody. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. We can also hear that it here, see that it says that data may be stored for up to 28 days. So we've also got to consider the fact that um, it, you're not going to be able to have somebody start a survey and then potentially wait for two months and then go back to it. So it's kind of a, it's a great feature, but it's you know, designed so that you've still got a time frame in which you want someone to be going and filling that survey out. All right, so once we have that setting turned on, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go and resend this to a contact so that I can get access to the email. And we'll just go ahead and send it. And I'll wait a second and then go and fill out the survey. All right, so I've got my email and then I've got a link to the survey. So I'm going to fill out a couple of fields. And then maybe I look and think, oh, I don't have time to fill out the rest. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. Now, depending on your browser, it might actually prompt with a message. And again, that's more browser based than anything else. So that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and leave. And I'm going to now go ahead and click back to start the survey again. And remembering that I filled out those first two questions. So those questions are now populated and I'm going to go ahead and fill out a couple more. And we'll do this one as well. And again, if I close it and then go back to it, we'll see that those questions are saved. Now, what's going to happen is even though that's being saved, nothing's being stored in customer voice or dataverse. Um, which is basically, if you are using Dynamics 365 customer engagement, then nothing's being stored in there yet until the full survey response is submitted. And that's when it will go ahead and actually create that survey response record for this specific person that's filling out the survey. So it's really beneficial for the respondent in terms of especially if you have like a longer survey, they can start it, they can always then come back to it and finish it at a later time. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this something you think you'll be turning on for your surveys in customer voice? Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.